Simon, it looks like a pretty impressive system that you've installed here. What was the, the main motivation for putting the system in? Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, look, there was a, quite a few areas that we were interested in. We're sort of a semi-rural area, so power supply is um, always an issue. Uh, last week we had an outage for a day, um, and also we've got a concern with uh, bushfires around here. So I think what we're really trying to do is we want something that is going to give us consistent supply and backup when we need it the most. Now, I notice as we're coming up the driveway, you've got some uh, LG solar panels along the, yes. along the north side of the, the house. They're, yep. they're not exactly on the optimal uh, angle there, but it does mean you don't really notice them as you stand out in front of the house. Was that deliberate? Absolutely. I think one of the concerns we had is we've actually just redone the roof a couple of years ago, so the aesthetics of it were very much a concern. And some of the panels, um, you know, aren't that attractive um, and really catch your eye. Getting the LGs, they're full black, and as you said, we've we've kept to the profile of the roof, um, so they're probably, as you said, not an optimum, but they certainly aesthetically um, are a lot more appealing. A lot of products claim that they can do back up out there in the market, but what have you actually seen the system run while the grid hasn't been operating? Um, we actually turned the whole system or the grid off and we were operating the whole house, um, had the air conditioner going, everything, um, and it was all in the backup. So that was pretty cool to see. Um, you know, it, I don't know, it gives you a sense of security and a sense of power, so it was, yeah, pretty cool to see. And that was, it's a two-phase property you've got here, so you had both phases being backed up with no grid. Correct, yeah. I think we're fairly unique. Uh, maybe the systems, uh, our power source is a bit, you know, archaic because they usually have single or um, three-phase power. We've got um, twin-phase, so yeah, a little bit different. Yeah, Simon, some of these appliances such as aircon and water pumps and things, don't they take a lot of power to get them started? Absolutely. Um, that was one of our main, main reasons. We did a lot of research beforehand. And that's one of the main reasons we went with Selectronics, just because we know that they've got the capacity of that initial start, that surge of power that it needs. Um, the system can cope with that. As I said, we had our um, air conditioner humming along beautifully the other day and there was no problems or issues when it started up. So that's uh, very reassuring for us. And that's, that air conditioning is a whole of house air conditioning? Uh, yeah, refrigerated, whole of house. So we, um, we're not doing it rough here. Um, you know, and it was great to see that it was such a powerful unit. Um, as you said, not only running it, but the starting up is, is where the peak's going to be. Impressive. So how long can you operate if the grid should fail? What are you, your expectations? Uh, probably about eight hours, I think, is what we're, we're expecting that we'll be able to do. So, um, yeah, it's... It's good that we've pretty much got a day of um, power sitting yeah. in front of us. What happens when the grid fails? Do you notice anything in the, the house or how do you, what happens? Do you know? No, we don't actually, which is a really good thing. Um, you don't actually see anything. Um, you know, you expect maybe the lights are going to dim or something's going to slow down, but it doesn't. It just keeps motoring along. So we've, we've actually got the app, which is really handy. That is called uh, Slack Live. Um, and that will actually tell you and give you an alert that it's actually, you know, on not on the grid anymore and, um, you know, you're in backup mode. Um, and that's the only way you know. So the app's really good because it also then enables you to adjust and um, alter you and manage your power accordingly. Now, Simon, you're a successful businessman. What about the financials of a system like this? How do you view that? Well, I think there's, there's a lot of different ways of looking at it. First of all, there's just the direct return. Um, you know, I think, you know, when the sun's shining, um, we've got 10 kilowatts of um, panels out there. So that's running the show for us. Um, we can export, we've got a limit, we can only export three kilowatts at any time back into the grid. Financially, that's never going to set me up for retirement or anything like that. But it's certainly good to know that some of it's going back that other way, any of the excess power. But storage is obviously a big part of it. Now, during the day, sun shining, but with that storage, it means that we can still use power that we've generated either uh, at night or uh, in the mornings before the sun comes up. And I guess if you are in that hopefully never to have situation of a bushfire, being where you are here in a fairly enclosed bush area, 
when that bushfire comes, you really value the fact that you still got power when you know you're going to lose mains power. So I guess that would be a pretty big value that you can't put a number on. Huge. I mean, when you're talking your family, your your, your property, all of those sorts of things, um, peace of mind is a massive thing over the summer months in particular. Um, you know, this area, as I said, has was all hit through Ash Wednesday. So we know that it is prone. And having that backup, yeah, you're right, the power is the first thing to go. And you've got all your pumps. They will start to fail. So by having that um, a system that even if we did decide to leave, we could still have the system running um, while we're not here to hopefully uh, save our, our property and, more importantly, our lives if it really got to it. Mm. If I could summarise your system, Simon, you've got 10 kilowatts of LG solar panels, 5 kilowatts on each phase. Yep. You've got two SP Pro 5 kilowatt battery inverters. Yes. With two ADV solar inverters, and you've got 33 kilowatt hours of power plus lithium batteries. How important was the choice of certain brands and certain componentry to you? What, what motivated you in some of those choices? When we're talking about something that's sort of off the grid and needing this backup, uh, the common thread always doesn't matter what variables we're looking at, everyone was mentioning we had to have electronics into it. That actually made me do a little bit in, in more investigation in that area and knowing that it's actually a really uh, well-known brand worldwide but it's made here locally here in Australia or Melbourne. Um, that was just uh, the icing on the cake for me. So in particular, you know, it's electronics. It's got 10-year warranty uh, on the, uh, the inverter. So that keeps us uh, happy and um, content that we've got the right product, you know, because they're happy to put their name behind it for the next 10 years. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Simon. It's been a pleasure. And uh, I'm sure we look forward to years and years of successful operation. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.